Today we're going to be talking about accelerating repeated migrations as part of systems deployment. Um, that can include something as simple as a database or setting up a new, a new CRM system. Um, it really is sort of uh, part of, you know, uh, th things that we do every day here at Clover, um, mostly migrations, and I'm sure some of you um, have had your own <laughs> issues. And uh, today we're going to sort of provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to, you know, sort of uh, think about migrations in general and how to create repeatable processes that can help us in the future um, to get things done much more quickly. With that, let's start. So real simple, data migrations is the process of taking data from an original source system and pushing it to a target system. Um, it can often take weeks, months, or even years to complete. Um, if any of you have done migrations to things like Workday um, or you know, huge sort of CRM migration, uh, that can take quite a while, right? And it's because it's usually done in parallel to target system implementation. So we're identifying a switch to a new system. Uh, CRM is, is a good example in general. Um, and we you know, have decided, hey, we're, we're gonna go ahead and, and go with this solution or this vendor. Uh, and now we have to figure out how to push all of our old data uh, to this new target system, right? <clears throat> it requires an intricate knowledge of both the source. So think of years and years of historical data uh, on a single system, right, in your organization and the target where you're potentially going to use, right? Um, and, you know, it's kind of sort of difficult to figure out what that target looks like if you've never actually worked with it yourself. So just some things to consider while you're going through that process. Data migrations in general start with a project and somewhere along the way, we'll have the first data seen uh, by a client in the new system, right? About halfway through after we've sort of planned, uh, targeted, picked the vendor um, and planned this all out, uh, we can finally extract and validate data, right? <clears throat> it usually involves analysis, extraction, validation of that data, right? So, you know, if we put garbage into this new system, we're gonna get garbage out of it. Cleansing, loading, reconciliation, making sure that everything is as it was before in, in, in the previous system or as relatively well as we can do that as well. Um, and this is sort of your traditional migration, just a single uh, system to system implementation, uh, nothing too crazy. But the idea here and sort of the whole point of this webinar is we'd like to provide sort of a framework for this to be done um, in the future, right? So we provide what are essentially called accelerators. The accelerator concept is the idea that we're able to get data into a client system as soon as possible, so sooner on the first try. And throughout that process, we're gonna create an accelerator that will then refine to extend uh, to other parts of the migration process, therefore making future implementations and future migrations much easier uh, from both uh, you know, us as an implementer, right, or as maybe a consulting consultancy, and, um, for our customers as well. So some challenges that typically come up in data migration in general. Um, a lot of sort of traditional legacy systems have relied on semi-manual data entry. So think of validations done in Excel macros and VLOOKUPs, um, just sort of uh, inconclusive or invalidated data. Uh, and it's difficult to scale. These migration uh, methods uh, are usually scaled just by hiring more consultants for more people to do more mapping, more discovery, um, you know, more uh, sort of domain expertise. And they're often very slow. Uh, this is mostly due to communication overhead between client um, and consultancy, uh, and implement uh, people who are implementing the actual solution uh, and just latencies between that. And it's often prone to errors. So some migrated data may not be possible to fix after migration. You know, there is, that possibility that our old systems do have garbage in them, what do we do with that data, right? It's, you know, a sort of conundrum, if you will. Uh, and I'm sure some of you have, have experienced this as well. And this is all assuming the optimistic approach to migration, hoping, you know, that there's no need to rerun this whole process at some point if we somehow failed. Um, some common risks are, you know, just sort of causes of these issues. Uh, our source data has undergone several changes throughout its lifetime. So, you know, even if we have, you know, 100 consultants looking at this, there's always going to be continuous discovery and correction uh, as that system has sort of developed or iterated. There's misaligned and unrealistic ex expectations from the client side. Um, you know, sometimes these migrations are expected to solve everything in a business, uh, but 
including poor data quality issues. Um, but, you know, I guess in some ways, the migration is our opportunity to try to correct these as they come through, right? Uh, so we have to just think of that and have that as a consideration as well. Often there's an underestimated uh, uh, nature to the complexity importance of the migration. We're mostly thinking sort of macro scale, right? We're thinking about system and process configuration, but the actual sort of boots on the ground, um, you know, mapping these different systems out um, and, you know, field to field, making sure everything matches up um, is really quite complex and in a lot of ways harrowing for most uh, businesses. The expectation is again, to fully successfully migrate on a first attempt, but there are often circumstances that cannot be mitigated. So these are just things to keep in mind, to keep realistic expectations, to make sure that we're all on the same page that through this you know, traditionally very tough process. Uh, and that's why we here at Clover have worked with and within companies to develop accelerators. Accelerators themselves can take um, you know, things that typically take weeks, months, or years and trim down on those wasted efforts. The repetitive tedious tasks are better dealt with in automated frameworks rather than having someone click a run button a hundred times, right? The technical details of, you know, weighing down large scale projects, we really want our consultants and the people that are implementing these systems to focus on their area of expertise, right? We don't want to have to focus on data validation or um, sort of the, the ones and zeros of building migration out. Our customers have very high expectations. So uh, we want to be able to provide them uh, with tangible results as soon as possible so that their feedback can then be uh, iterated on as well. Just simple things uh, that can really sort of save you time and money going through this whole process. Uh, the whole concept of an accelerator is creating a baseline migration solution, right? Get something simple down first, right? Just system A to system B. And then we work with our customers to fit their specific needs, right? Around data quality issues, around reporting, around what, how they want this to function as their ideal data scenario. We wanna iterate on it to create a robust solution um, that we can then maybe reuse for the next client. Uh, but the most important thing is having tangible results based app that we can then iterate on as well. The accelerator itself um, is built using Clover DX as a data management platform. Uh, it's gonna be able to connect to any sort of data system uh, and then push it out to the target system. So really sort of simple, but once we, I'll, I'll show you guys in a sec, the actual implementation of it uh, can be extended quite a bit. But Clover DX at the end enables you to build accelerators, which shorten the time of repeated migrations from weeks to mere days. Uh, and this is something that a lot of our clients have had success with in general, um, mostly in the consultancy space, uh, they've used our tool to create repeatable migrations that they now you know, sort of specialize in in our, in a lot of ways, um, business leaders or, or sort of uh, providers, leaders in the provider space of these migrations. Clover DX management platform allows you to collaboratively, collaboratively work on large data initiatives like a large migration. It allows you to create an enterprise data backbone to basically create your own ideal data scenario. Uh, so whether it's for you or a client, uh, you can go in there and say, and talk to business people in general and say, hey, you know, or technical people as well. Uh, what is our ideal data scenario look like if we had to you know, have a magic marker and make this work somehow? We're sort of able to be flexible and extendable enough to fit this sort of solution. We tackle messy data. So needing so any data sort of needing cleaning up, repurposing, reconstruction or enrichment, um, we have processes set up and we can help you set up processes to deal with that bad data throughout the migration process, but all built so that we meet tight deadlines, right? Traditional approaches can't deliver on time. Let's try to accelerate this whole process. And with Clover, ultimately we want all these things running on autopilot. We want all of our data workloads, including um, sort of migrations, run to include exceptions and intricacies of real life processes, right? So let's say we're, try, we're trying to migrate to a CRM application, right? Let's, um, maybe there's faulty data somewhere along the way. We wanna be able to automatically handle uh, this as it comes through so it doesn't break the entire migration, right? Uh, we wanna schedule jobs for automatic delivery uh, that can be to data warehouses, databases, data lakes, however you wanna sort of look at it. And we wanna be able to orchestrate external systems and tools by having uh, Clover essentially sit as the center of all of our different events API calls, message queues, uh, data systems in general, 
this is the backbone of any uh, enterprise level data management solution. And really the power here is gonna be with building our own templates and frameworks that we can actually allow non-developers to customize and reuse um, with proven implementations. Uh, again, we're sort of transforming and packaging our migration framework into the accelerator. Use case, super simple, source, source database to a target database. This is something that we implemented for our client ourselves uh, not too long ago. Uh, they needed to move something from system A to system B. Uh, and I'll show you guys how we're able to sort of uh, do this continuously um, in a way that allows us to uh, sort of reap the rewards of our hard work, right? Once you have a, build, a migration built in once, uh, it should be easier to do the second time around, right? So here's how it starts. We established a baseline process. So we use components within CloverDX um, to build an actual uh, you know, workaround that will extract data from a source database and load it to a target database. Super simple, extract, load. Um, there wasn't much transformation here. So think of traditional ETL. It was pretty basic, just mapping one-to-one, -one, right? Sort of a, a replication scenario. But we quickly identified the ability for us to iterate, right? So let's say we're running this um, process, right, on a thousand databases um, and, you know, tens of thousands of tables, right? Uh, we want to be able to have some sort of report for us to look at from a business user's perspective, right? Get an idea of where this data is going in our organization, how this migration is going about, right? So we iterated on this to have an extract load and reporting part to it. So that I can clearly say, hey, you know, here's the database, um, here's the table name, here's how many, uh, you know, uh, things were extracted during the duration, here's the load ID, and how things are loaded. And this could go on and on, right? But with simple reporting purposes, uh, we have this sort of out here, right? So again, it gives an insight into what things are going on on the business side and allows us to extend it a little bit, right? So we said, hey, you know, this was uh, a specific implementation from Oracle on-prem to a MySQL cloud instance, right? But this client had an idea of, hey, we're gonna need to do this for not just Oracle um, or MySQL, but also SQL Server and a couple Postgres, a couple different flavors of databases, right? So that's sort of where we uh, you know, were able to uh, implement and identify areas for improvement, right? we're able to actually now, rather than explicitly extract the source DB and load it, we're actually adding a part that's gonna go reach out to a database and identify what database it is and what sort of metadata to build for it, right? So if I have an Oracle on-prem DB, right? I wanna actually discover the schemas and harvest all the different uh, schemas along with the tables, uh, the field names, all of that, so that you know, rather than have to explicitly state it out like before in the extract part, right? We'd have a team of consultants go through and do the actual manual mappings. We've actually built a solution that will discover the schema of these databases, the flavor of the, of the DB that it's coming from, whether it's Postgres, um, MySQL, uh, Oracle, whatever it may be. And then it's gonna build the artifacts that we need for this actual implementation, right? So it's gonna say, hey, um, this is an Oracle DB. Here's the metadata type that this looks like. Here are all the different metadata files for all these different tables. Go ahead and extract and load and report from here on out. So really uh, a small piece, right? That it seems like, but it, it it's completely changed how we run these migrations now. Now, rather than do, you know, have a team of consultants mapping these out uh, explicitly, we have basically a, a one-click run hey, we're gonna discover the schema and harvest all the metadata files there for you. Uh, so huge difference in how they started implementing, uh, huge difference in cutting down the time for running this actual migration from a source DB to a target DB. And finally, we were able to repackage it for our next client, right? So now uh, we are actually able to, uh, based on configuration files, um, sort of decide uh, where, each one of these databases, what they look like, uh, what flavor they are, and state from a configuration point of view, what tables we're interested in, uh, in migrating, right? So maybe we don't want the whole system. We can just uh, type up a quick XML document that looks like this. Uh, and so this parts configuration part looks like this. 
or in the bottom here, we have different table names. We've created our own sort of, um, you know, configuration based uh, logic, if you will. That's going to be able to tell me, hey, we're going from Oracle to MySQL, grab these tables or grab every table except for these tables. You know, there's a few different ways to implement. But the idea here is this, this beginning part, this C, can be uh, sort of configured and uh, sort of uh, wired up, if you will, based on external data sources. It can be databases, it can be spreadsheets. You can have these config files sitting, you know, as XML documents like I have here, or we could have a, a DB table that lets me know exactly what I'm interested in, right? Lots of different possibilities, but at the end here, um, you know, it's gonna create a uh, continuous system where I'm parsing a configuration file. I'm reaching out to the schemas that I've been directed to go look at and inspect, building all the artifacts um, for extraction, uh, all the sort of dynamic SQL queries that I can think of. And then it's gonna actually run them and extract them, load them into a target DB, create that final report and mark successes or failures along the way. So uh, at the end, really this accelerator has cut down the time and process, uh, you know, again, from years, months to mere days, right? As far as, hey, let me change this config file. Uh, I want these five databases run from A to B and it's done, right? And to take it one step further, uh, we're actually able to share this entire process across our team and with our clients, right? So now we've built this nice little accelerator, right? In a silo, it does a really great job of doing one or two things, but why not share it with your entire team, right? This whole thing can be um, condensed down to a uh, migration pipeline, if you will, um, that allows, you know, I could easily send this to my colleagues who are trying to do a similar implementation or new clients as well, right? It's really a way for us to share the wealth of knowledge that we have created over this whole process. And then we can also extend and improve this as needed, right? So right now I'm actually manually typing out configuration files, but this could be extended in a lot of ways to build the configuration files myself, right? So I could actually, you know, scan an entire DB, get the flavor, build the configuration files without having to explicitly say it, right? Uh, and then run the migration, which is this part right here, right? Extracting, loading, creating reports and then confirm the integrity, right? So then I could then, maybe the next logical step would be, hey, what was in my target system? What's in my source system? Find any delta or data that didn't make it across and then use that for its own reporting system as well. So there's really endless possibilities in how you wanna extend this. The idea though is at the end of the day, really what we want um, and, you know, is to make this entire process as easy as possible for business users. Um, to have, you know, maybe a self-service migration. And this is something that we actually have built for clients in the past, but actually have a migration available for clients via a web app, right? So that configuration file that I showed you guys earlier, I have a web application now that allows me to upload a uh, configuration file, say, hey, I want the report in a CSV, schedule a run, uh, and then I'll click run app, and it'll actually give me a report of everything that happened along the way, right? So, it went from, you know, a team of people building hours and hours uh, of, you know, configuration-based um, processes like this to now we have a one-click solution, basically, where we're uploading a configuration file, formatting it, and letting it run uh, in a matter of minutes, really, rather than a matter of, you know, uh, months or years. And that whole concept can be extended beyond just migrations, but data processes in general using Clover. Um, it just makes that whole a lot easier. Um, and I'm you know, happy to say that a lot of our clients have found quite a lot of success and found themselves being sort of um, leaders in the space uh, compared to their competition when they have something as powerful as Clover on their side. So with that, uh, quick summary, we are most interested in building class leading accelerators. Right. Let's not build the same pipeline a hundred times. Let's do it once, iterate, uh, be able to extract that, uh, extract and abstract that concept um, onto tackle bigger problems. Right. To minimize the effort required to start a migration process, and so we can spend more time dealing with customer specific needs, communicating with them, uh, making sure that all their needs are met. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, really, um, you know, you're going to be able to make much more money and much less time. Uh, which is a great selling point, I'm sure.